Hi, I'm Linda Augsburg, Editorial Content Chief for American Patchwork and Quilting Magazine. And in this Show Me How video, brought to you by Baby Lock and the Crescendo Machine, I'm going to show you how to make this fun sewing organizer. To get the instructions for it, go to allpeoplequilt.com backslash show me how organizer. Let's get started. So for the cover of your organizer, you're going to want a 13 and a half by 10 inch piece of fabric. And if your fabric is directional, you'll just want to decide which direction you want that to go in. You'll also need a same size 13 and a half by 10 inch piece of heavyweight fusible interfacing. That gives the whole organizer a little stability. Now on the inside, here are the pieces that you'll need. The inside has two lining pieces one for each side. Those are cut seven by 10. And again, mine are directional, so I had to be aware of which direction I wanted things to go. In addition, you're going to cut three binding strips. Now, we were using a fat quarter to start, so we cut those at two and a half by 22 inches wide. Now, I chose to have my binding match my left pocket, but the instructions do tell you to have it match the lining so that's up to you. I just wanted to call that out so that you are buying the correct yardage as you're working. Then for the left pocket, you'll cut an eight by 10 inch piece of fabric and you will be folding that in half. For the bottom right pocket, you're going to cut a seven by nine and a half inch piece of fabric. And again, mine's directional. So I had to pay attention to which direction things were going. You will also fold that in half as we go. Then for the two needle and pin holders, you're going to cut a two and a half inch by three and a half inch piece of felt, two pieces that size. Now you can use pinking shears to cut those, or if you have a pinking blade for your rotary cutter, you can use that instead. And finally, for the ties, you'll need one 18 inch piece of extra wide half inch double fold bias tape. So I'd like to prepare all of my pieces before I really sit down to sew. The first thing I'm going to do then is to fuse the fusible side of the interfacing to the wrong side of my cover fabric. I'm going to make sure I get a good fuse, so follow your instructions on the fusible interfacing because each brand can be a little different. That's going to give it stability. Next, I'm going to take my 8 by 10 left pocket piece fold that in half so it's four by 10 and place it on my left lining piece, lining up these three outer edges. The fold should be toward the inside. Finally, I'm going to fold my seven by nine and a half inch piece in half. Remember, this is a directional fabric so you wanna make sure that you get the direction correct. Then I'm going to mark a line at three and a half inches, which is the center, and then another line to each side of that one and a half inches away. Those will form the four pockets. And that's going to end up being placed there at the bottom of the right lining piece. In addition, I've measured in three quarters of an inch from the sides and the top of that same piece and marked a corner in each corner. And what I'm going to do then is pin those felt pieces using that corner to line up one corner and then the other, pin those in place. Now I can go and do a lot of sewing at one time. So I'm going to base the pocket to the left lining piece. I'm going to base it along the bottom edge, the side edge, and then the top edge. Now some machines have a basting stitch or a basting setting where the machine will feed and you'll get every so often it'll take a stitch. Otherwise, if you want to baste, just do a longer stitch than normal. And in addition, you want to make sure you're well within what's going to be your seam allowance, in this case a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to make sure I'm either a scant quarter or even an eighth of an inch from the edge. That way I can be sure that that basting stitch won't show later. On the right side, we're going to sew down those pocket lines that we marked on that bottom right pocket. Now I'm going to use a stitch that takes a tack stitch at the beginning rather than going back and forth. It'll be a little more secure and it won't have those extra stitches in place. So I'm going to 
just take the bullet stitch and then once it's tacked two or three times I can just follow along that pencil line. In the same way I'm going to start with that tack stitch or bullet stitch and sew just along the top edge of each felt rectangle. So now that you've sewn down the felt pieces in the pocket you're going to sew the two lining pieces together with a quarter inch seam and you'll have your lining. You can see now why we did that in two pieces. That pocket on the bottom is now caught in that center seam so that gives you a nice pocket there and on this side of course it will be bound so that will finish off that fourth pocket as well. So you're going to pin the lining to the cover wrong sides together and just sew right in that seam like stitching in the ditch on a quilt just to secure those two pieces together. Next you're going to sew a seam along that open edge of the bias tape. Then cut the bias tape into two nine inch pieces and center them along the long edges on the left and right side right at that five inch mark. Go ahead and baste or sew those in place again staying inside that quarter inch seam allowance so it won't show when the binding's done. Do that on both the left side and the right side and then we're ready to bind. I've pinned the two ties together here in the center so that they don't get caught in the seam in error. I also pinned down my two felt rectangles for the same reason so they don't get caught in that binding. When you attach the binding I like to start with this project on the back edge so this lower right pocket. If you have your seams right here at the fold where the piece will fold it gets a little bulky because you've already got the seam allowance from the lining there and this extra pocket seam allowance as well. So you just want to start I like to start at this end come around so this corner up and over and then have it meet here on the back. It's the least obvious place for that join to be. Once you've sewn that binding on just bring it around to the front and top stitch it in place. And that's all there is to making this adorable sewing organizer. That's all there is to it. I just love this organizer. It holds a small mat, your smaller rulers, and other small sewing supplies you need to take along. Also those felts are great for pins and needles and once you just fold it in half and tie the bias tape in a bow you're ready to take it to any class or any other sewing session you're going to. Again for those instructions go to allpeoplequilt.com backslash show me how organizer. Thanks for joining us today. Happy sewing!